Craig here from North 49. In this video, I'm going to share with you a bedside clinical test that we found very beneficial in assessing for vestibular loss, being the skull vibration induced nystagmus test. In this video, we'll talk about what it is, uh, how to perform it, the equipment involved, the directions, precautions, validity criteria, all that stuff. And really simply what it is, it's applying a vibrator to the back of the skull and looking for nystagmus. And it's really good test, and we'll get into a little more detail, for assessing for vestibular hypofunction loss and for a third window being a anterior canal dihesis. So really, our history with the test is, you know, we heard about it over the years, and when we delved into it, we found those really sensitive or more sensitive than a lot of our other bedside cl clinical tests in assessing for a vestibular loss. And really, the if you look at the research, the sensitivity of the test is anywhere from 75 to 98%. The 75% is with those with a partial vestibular loss, and 90% is those with a complete loss, whereas a specificity is 94%. So regardless, both are quite high, and that's what we find clinically as well. Now, the equipment that you'll need for the test is you'll need some infrared goggles. So we have some infrared goggles here and um, a vibrator, okay? And I'll just save you the embarrassment now. I went on Amazon and typed in handheld vibrator and a lot of things came up that weren't clinically relevant um, to what we need here. So I walked into Walmart, found this vibrator and uh, some things that you need to look for because you can't just get any uh, handheld vibrator. I found a lot of them um, didn't vibrate at the frequency that was needed. And the research shows ideally it should vibrate at 100 hertz. Now a lot of um, vibrators, if they have specs on them, they'll have it as RPMs. All right, so we found one. This one said 100 hertz. We purchased that one. Now this vibrator isn't a medical device. We don't get it calibrated on a yearly basis. How do I know if it's effective? Well, Really, the research shows as long as it's between 60 and 120 hertz, that window, you should be fine. And 100 hertz is smack dab, uh, somewhat in the middle there. So we're good that way. And we also went with a handheld device with a cord. That way we knew it would give consistent performance. You know, there's no batteries going to get low, which may affect performance that way. So just some things to consider with equipment. So you need your goggles and a handheld vibrator. Now, as far as directions, what you simply do is apply the vibrator perpendicular to the mastoid bone right behind the ear. Avoid the mastoid process because that can stimulate some of the neck muscles, but right behind the ear. And you want to hold it for 10 seconds. And you want to try it three times each side. You can also try the vertex as well and uh, you want to hold it at least 10 seconds and it said the instructions in the research say you have to hold it or apply enough force for 10 newtons so what is 10 newtons so i had to google that as well and it's 2.2 pounds of linear force and just to kind of ensure i was not applying too much or not too little i grabbed my handheld dynamometer here place it against the wall and pushed into it so i got just over two pounds of linear force which is 10 newtons. So it gave me the idea how much force to apply. So you apply the vibrator to the back, perpendicular to the massive, hold it for 10 seconds, 10 newtons, all right? And you put the goggles on and you try three trials each side. Now the research shows that the massive process are more sensitive in uh, picking up a vestibular hypofunction, whereas a third window, the vertex is more sensitive um, in picking up a third window dysfunction, all right? So things to consider as well. And the validity criteria is the nystagmus should start as soon as the vibrator is applied and it should stop as soon as the vibrator is stopped or taken away. It, there won't be a delay. It'll be sustained, it'll be reproducible, and the nystagmus will always beat in the same direction wherever you apply the vibrator. So with analyzing the test results, if you see nystagmus, with vibration, the nystagmus will beat away from the affected side with a vestibular loss or a vestibular hypofunction, whereas it'll be towards the affected side with a third window. Now, thinking about precautions, people that you may want to 
stay away from using this test. Really, common sense is always your best approach. And four things that I can think of off the top of my head would be people with a um, recent surgery to the skull or eyes, um, recent traumatic brain injury or concussion, um, someone who has poorly controlled anticoagulant therapy, and someone obviously with a detached retina would be the people for sure I would avoid with this test. Now, with that being said, let's take a look at what a positive test would look like. And this patient is someone that I saw who had a acoustic neuroma or vestibular schwannoma that was resected and was having uh, issues with dizziness. Initially, she had, you know, gaze of nystagmus. She had a positive, had impulse test. She had a significant discrepancy between her static and dynamic visual acuity. But with time, all these tests uh, became negative as she improved, but she still had some symptoms. So I put the vibrator on and, and with that being said, let's, let's see what happens. Okay, let's just look in straight ahead. Just 10 seconds. His eyes open. Look to your left a little bit with your eyes. And stop it. It's the right side, hey? Uh, right the tumor side? side? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that makes sense then. That's like even more dizzy. Eyes open. Yeah, that's dizzy. Stop. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it informative. And if you'd like to see any further education from North 49, we have some free stuff on our website at courses.north49therapy.com. There's also a free monthly email subscription that you can sign up to or sign up for that covers, you know, just clinical stuff that's relevant, uh, marketing stuff to really take your level of understanding of vestibular therapy and ability to market it to the next level. So until the next video, take care and see you then.